and welcome to the very first episode of the Hull Seahawks podcast in association with Beverly FM. We're very excited to bring you this uh, weekly treat from ourselves at Beverly FM and with the Hull Seahawks. It's going to be an absolutely fascinating insight into the club and we're very excited to be joined for the first episode by first of all, Matty Davis. How are you, Matty? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. It's uh, yeah, good to... Um... I mean, we do this on a regular basis, but yeah, to have it sort of, you know, become a regular thing and offer it to, you know, the fans as a, you know, weekly thing where they can keep up to date with everything, what's going on with the club and we'll get, you know, plenty of different guests in that are, you know, part of the club, supporters of the club. Um, So yeah, it's going to be fun. And we're very excited to be joined by Declan Barmer as well for this first episode. Thanks very much for joining us, Dec. Uh, no problem. Um, thanks for having me. Of course. We're going to get straight on to this. Unfortunately, Dec doesn't have too long of us here on the first episode this evening, but I'm sure he'll be joining us again later in the season. But we're going to crack straight on with just a reflection on last year, Deck, both for the team and for yourself, of course. You were a huge part of everything the Seahawks did last year, an absolute iron man on the ice, both in terms of your minutes <laughs> and in terms of just your out-and-out play, both on the defence and the way you're picking up points going forward too. Do you want to reflect on, as one of the leaders of this group, um, what last season was about? Of course, difficult in terms of results and league position, but it was about setting things up in the right way for the Seahawks to then go and move into the 23-24 season with everything heading in the right direction. Do you think you guys sort of started to achieve that last year? Uh, yeah, I think um, obviously we, did, we we didn't have the the year that we wanted to and um, we didn't have, like I say, we didn't have the greatest of seasons. Um, we had a lot of young guys on the ice, a lot of um, inexperience to the, the sort of level that we was playing at. But I think you saw in some games and certain parts of the season – you definitely saw the a, a great foundation with the young guys that we had on the team and um just showing that they they can play at that level um i think it was a little bit of a like i said earlier it was a little bit of an inexperienced sort of thing um a little bit of inconsistency with what we had through the season we were kind of a, a roller coaster at some part uh, some parts near christmas we had um we had a great time near christmas we were we were playing unbelievable we were winning games like against some top teams and taking top teams really close. And then uh, I think at points we dipped a little bit as well, but I think we just put that down to it was a fair season and um, inexperience a little bit. Of course, I just want to ask, while we're still reflecting on 22-23, what did it mean for you as you know someone Hullborn but never played any senior hockey in Hull to finally throw in a Hull jersey in front of, you know, a home crowd, you know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that you know, you know, in the stands. And just to be able to sort of wear that Seahawks jersey and to be one of the leaders in that group. Uh, yeah, it was um it was amazing really. Like you said, I've I, I think my last season playing in Hull was I maybe was fifteen years old. So it's been thirteen years since I played for a Hull team, never played senior. Um, it was just great to have my parents and some friends coming week in, week out, which um, with some of the teams I've played for, they haven't really been able to do. And um, yeah, it was just great to finally get to play for my hometown when I had a, I had a little rumour around Christmas when I was in Swindon that there was a potential for Matty to be bringing the team to Hull. And uh, I mean, it got me really excited. And then once Matty rang me, I think there was almost no doubt that I was going to be returning. And of course, being obviously a, a key part of the group last year, of course, Matty's put a lot of time and effort in this off season um, into really strengthening up that decor. How do you see your role for next season? Of course, a lot more experience, you know, coming into that decor this year, you know, players like Thomas Barry, you know, who's played a multitude of games across the NIHR national division. Um, and also maybe an opportunity for you for yourself to be still a bit fresher, maybe not doing 35, 40 minutes on the ice of nights. Um, how do you think that might affect your role in your game throughout the next upcoming season? Um, personally, I, I, I think my role will probably be around the same as what it was last year. Maybe not the, well, 
hopefully not the 40 minutes a night again because <laughs> I don't know how many more of them I've got in my uh, in my body. But uh, yeah, I think as with the way I play, I think it, it, I'll, I'll play the exact same way I did last year. Uh, it's how I've played for since I started senior hockey when I was 16 and I just can't see that changing anytime soon. And um, yeah, I think the role I sort of played last year is the role I've played for quite a few years. So I can't really see it changing too much. Just hopefully cut them minutes down. And uh, I don't think Matt will agree, but hopefully not uh, a bit less penalty killing and blocking shots. Yeah, absolutely, Sir Deck. And uh, uh, this next question is: uh, What are your ambitions for the Seahawks this year? And your your personal thoughts on the additions that Matty's already got through with very experienced National League players such as uh, Bobby uh, Bonner and Barry. Um, yeah, I think my my ambitions are the same as last year. Obviously, we had, like I said, we had a lot younger team, but my ambition every year is the same thing: finish as high as possible, win as many trophies as possible. Um, I think a few of the fans might have noticed it a little bit with me when we were losing games and I was leaving the ice and um, well, a few fans actually mentioned to me why I don't smile and I mean I'm <laughs> I'm at a team to do one thing and it's to win so that that's my ambition next year is win basically win the league win the cup win the playoffs they're my they're my goals for the team. And I think with the signings we've announced so far, with like you said, with Bobby, someone I've grew up with my my full life and I've known a very long time, but never got to play with him since we were under fourteens. Uh, Bonner, another one, and Barry, um, a few of the guys that they've signed. Danskin looks great. I think I think we're going to definitely shock the league this year compared to last year. So I know you've got to leave us very shortly, Deck. But one quick question before you get away is, what's your message to the Seahawks fans listening um, for the upcoming season? Of course, there's still the drive for season tickets are still available. Uh, there's all the events going on in the off season. What's your message to those before we actually get to September? Um, don't uh, don't expect last season at all. We are going to be a totally different team this year. From offense, defense, we're going to be in a, just an absolute total different beast to last season. So this year we're coming to win. Make sure you're a part of it. Well, we'll let you go on time, Deck. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Hopefully you'll join us on the Hull Seahawks podcast once again uh, at some time in the near future. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'll be, uh, I'll be honored to come back on whenever you want me. Excellent. Pleasure, Dak. Speak Cheers, to you shortly. Cheers, man. See you, uh, see you, bye. See you, pal. So, Matty, of course, we're going to come to yourself next. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about Deck. Just, uh, just uh, uh, He has had to go, unfortunately, but we want to get your thoughts, of course. Deck had a phenomenal season last year, defensive player of the year for the club as well. And you personally thought he was one of the best demon in the league. How much of an in- influence does he have on obviously on last year's squad, but going forward into this year, how important is he to what you're building? You know, he's, he's integral. Um, he, for me, is the most important player um, that I have. I think he's... Um, I mean, like I said, for me, I thought he was... You know, for me, I thought he was the best team in the league last year. And obviously there's people that have opinions, but... Um, you know what Deck bring, brings is you know he's got everything. He's he's solid. Um, plays really solid defense. Um, skates really well. Um, he can you know offensive. He's you know I think this year we're going to see more from him in in that side of it just because of you know the minutes that we just talked about. Um, and hopefully you know he won't he won't like this, but he's going to play on the kill anyway. So. Um, you know, he's one of the best killers we've got. He's got that long stick, he's smart. Um, you know, but for me, the whole the whole package with with Deck is is the is the real key. And, you know, I lean on Deck a lot. Me and me and Deck do speak quite a lot, n- not just about his game, but the team and you know, how we're playing and, and sort of, you know, even signings and stuff like that. Like, you know, he's one that I do talk to. 
um, get his input, what he thinks, and you know how he sees things as well. Um, so for me, yeah, he's been he's been brilliant, and I think you know we're lucky to have him back in Hull, and you know you can tell there from talking to him how much he he loves being back in Hull and playing you know in his own town and and playing in front of his mum and dad, his girlfriend, and all that. You know, it does mean. It just means more to him. Um, you know, we we spoke about this, I think, with Bobby, and um, you know, it just is different. It's a different feeling when you pull your, you know, the whole shirt on you. You know, you've got that little bit of more intensity that you don't want to, you know, let people down around you, and um, you know, you're just willing to go that little bit harder. But um, you know, again, for Deck, it's you know, he's a winner, and that's you know, we spoke about this before, but. You know, I'm trying to, you know, create a culture and build a culture within the club that we are a, a winning organisation. Um, you know, look, it's difficult. Obviously, we've spoke about the, being a new team and we're, you know, trying to do all that. But for me, it doesn't really matter. We've got to try and, you know, build in the right way long term. Um, and there's a clear DNA within the club that I want that is, you know, just hard hard to play against, you know, boys that are fully committed, hard grafters, you know, that that's my, you know, whole thing is grafting and, you know, that's my business and everything. So it all fits with me and, and everything, I, how I see the game being played is is very similar to that and how I did play. It's, it's all, you know, in, it sort of, you know, I like to see that everything is, is, is all to do with hard work off the ice, on the ice, you know, even you guys and what you're putting into it, um, Callum, Matty, everyone that's with the club are, are hard workers, honest people, um, and that just seeps into everything, um, you know, and if, if if it's me that's delivering the, the message, then it's, you know, it, hopefully everyone jumps on and we can all, you know, just be hard working and, and Deck is prime example of that and, He's gonna be even better next year, I think, with his, you know, another year in and he's 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 more comfortable. He's he's set within the room and, you know, being at home and working and playing and, and obviously you know, giving giving himself less to do in terms of, you know, deck was relied on heavily, it's probably too heavily at times, and that was my me just leaning on him. I mean, there'd be times he'd try and come to the bench and I'd be like, Deck, you've got to stay on like you know, just stay out there, you know. So, um, you know, he won't have to do that this year and hopefully it's, you know, we see the best of him. You know, we did we did for a lot of the season, but I think there's more to come from Dex. So, um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant signing, great kid. So. You mentioned there about how well, we are lucky to have him. I remember speaking with Aaron Nell prior to one of the Swindon games last year and, he did mention, <laughs> of course, about how well Deck was playing and how they still love to have him in Swindon. And there's probably more than just Swindon who, who wouldn't mind having a player like Deck on their books. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I speak to Aaron a lot. You know, we, we spoke today and funnily we was talking about D-men and, you know, he's he loves Deck and, you know, he, he was, you know, a little bit gutted that he couldn't, you know, get him back for the se- last season, but... You know, he's from Hull and, and that's just how it is. But, um, yeah, I think everyone in the league would have Deck on their team. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's a no-brainer. Of course, we spoke a lot about Deck. You know, we've heard Deck's thoughts and obviously we can't wait to see him back on the ice. But latest news from the Hull Seahawks, we've got an in and an out already this week. So we'll start off with the player we're seeing leaving the Seahawks and it's one of last year's imports. Um, obviously a fan favourite from a few years back in the Pirates days, someone everyone was so excited to see back and really did give his all at times on the ice last year. Um, obviously injury and visa dependent, and that was Andre Fumar. Uh, so just a few quick words on, you know, how, you know, obviously uh, Andre will be missed. You know, he's been a great part of the Seahawks in their first season. Um, and of course, there are times when obviously clubs and plays go different ways. And of course, we wish him all the best, but just your thoughts on Andre, Matty. Yeah, you know, you know, Temi, I've I've got me and him had a really good relationship, and you know, I I've, I really respect Temi a lot, um, and for what he did last year for me personally, because 
you know, he was unsure about coming back. And, you know, I had to really sort of pester him about coming. And we had a lot of conversations about it. And do you know what? It's sad that it's not worked out. And, um, you know, Temi won't be back. But look, we're, we're going in a little bit of a different direction. And, um, you know, Temi just unfortunately don't fit, you know, what I'm trying to do. And, it's it's nothing against Temi and in, in, in how he plays. We know Temi at times he could be you know a world beater, um, and we saw that this year. Um, you know his his skills and his shot are just you know something else, and it's it's you know it, it, look Temi is getting getting older. He's he's definitely you know in a different stage of his life as well, um, but. Yeah, nothing but good words to say about him and you know what he did for us is, you know, a great job and I'll never forget that. Um, you know, but like I say, you know, what what we've got for this year is um I think a really a very good all round team. Um the team obviously is constructed in, in a certain way and how I see every part of it and people's roles and how it fits. Um yeah, and you know the imports that we'll have in this year, are, you know, quite I think very exciting, and you know, hopefully, um, the fans think the same. No, of course, obviously, we wish all the best um, to Tammy. Uh, we we got to see on that very last game of the season, didn't we? Away at Peterborough, just the quality that the man still possesses is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And I've just got to say on a personal note, absolutely lovely gent. Uh, I remember at a lunch in Trinity Market, I bumped into him, and we sat there and had a, a Greek kebab together. Uh, yeah. A good bit of a nice. chat about hockey. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. Uh, we wish him all the best. But Martin, it's the it's the news that's broken. Uh, we do have an import sign for this year, and it's someone we all can't wait. Yeah, to see absolutely. So um, obviously, every Seahawk fan out there and players, they'll be delighted to see and uh, see the fact that Emil Speck, our top point scorer, is back with us. Uh, Matty, obviously, getting this uh, guys name on that dotted line must be absolutely massive because he had, I mean, even in a ban and everything, he had such a stellar season and he, he's just phenomenal. How excited are you to have his name on that dotted line? Oh, massively, mate. I think, obviously, you know, he's he's, he's almost like a cult figure now in Hull and he's only been here, I mean, half a season, essentially. But, um, yeah, look, the fans... I think this one's going to be really big for them. Um, you know, it's the one everyone wanted, and it's the one I wanted. You know, we've been talking to um, to Emil for a long time about coming back, and um, look, I think look, there's no doubt what we have with with Emil is, you know, one of the best in the league in terms of winning games and what he can do. Um, you know, it was just unfortunate what happened to him last year was. It just, you know, it was stop start for him, and he couldn't, he couldn't just find his rhythm early doors. Um, Emil's won a really, you know, he's a confidence player, um, and when he's going and playing well, and he feels good, then there's no one better than him. And you know, it just took him a little bit too, not too long, but it just took a bit of time to get him to that point. Um, you know, and and then when when he did it, you know, we saw the best of him and. You know, he fits, you know, in my team this year very highly amount and I think he's going to be, you know, even better this year um, with what he's going to be playing with and what he's got around him. Um, I feel like we did rely on Emil a little bit last year and, you know, going back to the Temi thing, it was, you know, them two unfortunately just didn't quite gel on the ice. Um, their games were just sort of a little bit similar um, and, and that sort of at times it, it sort of can, cancelled each other out um, you know I tried them together and then I took them away and then I put them back to, towards the end and they had some great games towards the end you know Connor just said there about the, the last game of the year but they had some really good games and you know unfortunately you know then I just don't see them two you know as a as a great partnership um, they both want to shoot the puck, and they both, you know, that's that's what they're there to do. They're there to score goals, and and that's you know, and I feel I feel like Emil needs, you know, someone that can get him the puck. Um, and yeah, I think 
I think we're in for a treat with him this year and he's going to come back a lot more re- ready to go. He's going to be in from day one. That that thing, I, I can promise we're already on with the visa now and it's there'll be no issues with that. Um, and yeah, so it's it's very exciting. I think the fans are going to be, you know, really happy with this one. And, um, you know, he's only going to, you know, be better this year and grow. And I think he, he could be a, a real favourite for a long time. No, I'd certainly have to agree. You know, the the way that the performance is just ramped up towards the end of the season, I think it was February, he was just on fire. It was, you know, three, four points a game week in, you know, week out. Um I've got to say, I've got some stats from the league last season. He was seventh in the league in points per game last year. Um, and that was with having the slow start. So it just shows, you know, from day one, Emil gelled into this team with someone who can maybe, you know, provide him a little bit more of that puck in the right position, you know, get a few more shots off from Emil. He's going to be near near, near enough unstoppable, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like I say, he, <clears throat> you know, he's got, you know, arguably the best shot in the league, and you know when he can hit the net and he's dialed in and he's feeling good. You know, not many goalies are going to stop that when he's in you know the prime positions that you know we want him in. And yeah, it's just the case of getting the right person around him or people, and 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 sort of you know gelling them together early and getting their games synced. Um, and once you get that, you get a very special relationship and players that can play together really well. And, uh, yeah, the points are, are going to, you know, come a lot this year. And I think it's only going to make him, you know, just more of a threat on the ice. And, yeah, it's, it's exciting, mate. I think it's really good news for us. Um, the club and everyone involved, uh, you know, it's it's great news. You mentioned he's a bit of a cult sort of hero already. He's a bit of a character as well. We've all seen the the tweets and things like that with him. A few gifts, teasing moves here and there. You know, after a few decisions, you know, he, he likes a bit of the banter already, doesn't he? And you know, I think the fans have really grown to love him. Oh yeah, he's <clears throat> he's like honestly, he's like a a giant child. He's he's I've never seen anyone um <laughs> like him. He, he's just. He's off his head. He's funny. He, he loves them gifts. He, he sends everyone gifts all day. Um, he's <laughs> he's just yeah. He's great. He's hilarious. He's 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 everyone likes him. He's he's one that that sort of person that you can't not like him. He's you know, all the lads you know love him and um like I say, I think the fans probably didn't get to know him as much as as you know they could have done they did towards the end of the year obviously and we had some great nights there at the you know the end of season awards and and whatnot and people that have seen him out and about um but yeah this year you're gonna see a lot more of him and um you know the fans are you know he, he reminds me a lot of Tendler when he was here he's he's sort of that sort of guy look you know he loves a BA he loves being you know around the, the fans and being you know just a great guy I mean we, when we go to Swindon now, um, you know, the, the amount of people, the fans that are there waiting for him and have got shirts for him or, you know, they love him there. Um, and, and it's you know, it's there's no wonder. And it's obviously the same here now. And um, I knew that when I signed him, that it was going to be a real hit. And it was funny at first because I feel like there was a lot of fans. Um, you know, I got people personally texting me about him. Um, maybe just unsure on him, and you know, maybe you know, oh, he's lazy and he's 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 this and that, and um, it's funny, but Tendler got the same thing when he first came, um, and people I don't think realise their sort of game and what they are. Um, Emil's never going to be all over the ice like Sam Toner is. He's, he's just not that guy. Um, but when he picks the puck up and skates with speed, he's. Like you say, he's unstoppable. He's fast for his size. He, he's, you know, he's he's so direct with his with his sort of game and where he's going. And and I, and I think, um, you know, as as the season went on, and I know Martin absolutely loved him, but um, you know, everyone grew to love him and and his game. Um, and yeah, I think there'll be not one person that won't be happy with this signing. Moving on to maybe league wider sort of um, news. Um, something that's obviously come about in the last sort of week, week or two is 
Um, the introduction of the Solway Sharks to the national division, of course, Basingstoke, they've dropped out um, due to renovations of their arena. But we're going to stay at 11 teams with um, Solway from just across the border, sort of uh, Dumfries in Scotland. Uh, they're going to be the 11th team in the national division. Um, for those who may be not too aware, they are they were the dominant force in the NIHL 1 North for the last few years. Uh, a few Hull players have even you know, spent a bit of time up there. I know Deck played for them years ago. And, of course, Liam Danskin spent a lot of time there last season. Uh, your thoughts on Solway coming into the league? And, of course, they've already picked up uh, a few nice acquisitions from uh, the Glasgow clan, haven't they? Yeah, it was a funny one because, you know, we'd not, as a as a set of owners in the league, we'd not really heard much. Obviously, you hear, you hear the rumblings like everyone does about them coming in and, Wanting, wanting to come in, <clears throat> but there was nothing ever official. Um, and then out of the blue, sort of, there it was. And, you know, we had some sort of emergency meetings on it and, you know, everyone had their vote and what they thought to it. And, you know, there was, you know, a lot of people were happy with it. Um, but there was, a, there was certainly a few that weren't, which I understand. And obviously, you know, with, with the travel, it's going to be tough for a lot of the, a lot of them teams that are down south, and obviously the biggest travel is going to be from Solway themselves, and they're going to have a real long year. Um, but for me, it's it's a no brainer for letting them in. Um, you know, it's a great club that they've been <clears throat> doing the right things for a long time, and you know the amount of good young players that have come out of there and still coming out of there is 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 quite unreal, really. Um, you know, we saw it ourselves with Kel, and I said this before, but um, you know th- what they've managed to do already um, with the signs they've made. They're going to be a good team, really good team. Um, it's I think it's different to us in terms of you know it's the first year in the league this year coming, but it's they're a ready-made club already. Um, they've they've already got really good players in there. They're just going to add bits around it, I'm guessing, and you know they're going to be, you know, already a, a ready-made national league club. Um, so you know, no doubt they're going to be, um, you know, they'll, they'll they'll make some serious noise this year, um, because I think you know they're going up there is going to be a difficult, you know, night for everybody, um, you know, and I, I think they're going to they're they're going to travel well because they're going to they're traveling every you know every week. It's going to be, you know, a tough, a tough one for them, but that, you know, they'll travel well because they'll be used to it. So, <clears throat> yeah, they'll be a tough teammate. They'll play fast, and, um, yeah, it's it's better for the league, mate. It's it's better that we're getting more teams and more more teams that that you know the clubs are looking to be here long term, and you know, hopefully, you know, Basin start come back next year, and there's a twelve league team and we can get into the conferences um which only helps everyone um in terms of travel and money and stuff like that so yeah it, obviously the future is looking great um and yeah it's it's a no-brainer for me it's all the way coming in of course the future is looking great for the nihl national division it's also from uh, our, I say, expert opinion, looking great for the whole Seahawks. Um, but thanks very much for joining us, Matty. Pleasure as always. I know you'll be joining us uh, most weeks here on the whole Seahawks podcast, uh, and we can't wait to see how this gets off the ground. Yeah, you know, brilliant boys. I think yeah, it's it's great. I think we can, you know, really, you know, do some good things with this and and get, you know, some really good guests on that fans are. Uh, no, not used to hearing from from players and different people around the club on a regular basis, and you know we're just trying we're trying to be you know upfront and honest, and you know I'm personally doing a lot of things at the minute, you know podcasting and getting out there because I I just want the buzz around the club, um I want as many eyes on it as 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 I can, and um you know and I think trying to be interactive and you know, make ourselves open and honest about what we're doing and what, what you know, the, the players are doing and what they're feeling and stuff like that. I think the fans, you know, I hope will love it and they get to hear off, you know, the players that they're watching on a weekend on a regular basis, which is, um, I think, great. And of course, I say most fans um, don't get to see too much of what goes on behind that curtain and this is just going to be 
uh, and access all areas insight into all things Hull Seahawks with myself, Connor Lynn, Martin Cattle um, from Beverly FM. You may also know us as the commentators for the Hull Seahawks live stream. And of course, uh, Matty Davis, uh, head coach and GM of the Hull Seahawks, who everyone listening to his podcast is all going to know. Um, and we're going to make sure this is a you know, fantastic celebration of the Seahawks, the NIH or National Division, and make sure you tune in every single week to hear the latest. Uh, from ourselves, Matty and the Seahawks. So thank you very much for joining us on the first episode of the whole Seahawks podcast in association with Beverly FM. Uh, and stay tuned and join us again next week.